six interception the last five games for Miles and Casey Critters to work and there is G. Roy Simon with the catch to the 45 Simon close to eight. Let's take a look at that Edmonton Eskimo defense Kai Ellis leads the front four with six sacks 59 tackles on the season there's the linebacking core Maurice Lloyd's been battling a hamstring injury all season long TJ Hill with a big game last week and there's the secondary Randy Drew and Kelly Malvo will have the pressure on them at halfback with G Roy Simon and Paris Jackson marked at the 46 gain of seven second and three pressure on printers and throws across his body. Martel Mallet with the catch. Jolted, but enough for the first down. Mark Bristelli and Maurice Lloyd are there. That's a throw that not many can make. And Casey Printer throws across his body. You heard Matt Dunnigan before the game talk about how important it's going to be for the Edmonton Eskimos to try and squeeze the pocket on Casey Printer, to try and keep him in the pocket make him a pocket passer if they let him outside and escape like he has done in the last two weeks he can really beat you because now he's got the dual threat he can either run it on the outside or look deep 41st catch of the year for Mallet who has missed two of the last three takes the handoff straight ahead DJ Hill there on the tackle as Mallet crashes down to the 37 just show you an example of what the defensive ends for the Edmonton Eskimos are going to have to do to play Casey Printers. Watch Greg Peach here, the defensive end for Edmonton now. Look how cautious he is as he steps up. Doesn't even want to go deep down the field. He played the line of scrimmage there, just sliding along because he does not want to allow Casey Printers to escape to the outside. Both defensive ends for Edmonton, or if they send linebackers or DBs, are going to have to stay contained conscious. And... Casey Printers has been shaken up and a problem with the right hand has Bill Rochelle out. And how does this impact the Casey Printers comeback story? The forgotten man the past couple of weeks is Buck Pierce. I wonder if that happened the play before on that throw across his body. Does he get a little bit of the helmet there? He might have missed. He didn't. He didn't hit the helmet there on the follow through. It may be the landing where he went down hard to the turf and, and that right hand hit the turf. Buck Pierce will have to come in now for three plays at the very least. Buck Pierce, who left the game a couple of weeks back against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers with an injured shoulder joint. After back-to-back 300-yard -back games for him, looked like he had grabbed control of this team until the injury in Winnipeg, and since then, nobody's talked about him. Let's see if Buck can come off the bench. There's a strike here. Mark Bristelli, the tackle on Paris Jackson, down to the 34-yard line. Well, in one of those games, Chris, that you mentioned was against the Edmonton Eskimos. Of course, the huge comeback for the BC Lions with 12 seconds left when they hit G. Roy Simon. That was Buck Pierce at starting quarterback. Well, they look at Casey Printers and his right thumb. Pierce to Paris Jackson and up for a first down. Double tight end formation. Martel Mallet down to the 26. It's a good point, though, that he has been the forgotten man over the last two weeks with all the hype and talk about how well Printers has played versus Calgary in Mosaic Stadium two weeks again ago against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Buck Pierce had those back-to-back 300-yard -back games, and he had to prepare. He's been ready for two weeks now. Jock made the point that. It hadn't really been discussed who should start. Here, there was no discussion. It, it was Casey Critters. And no one was arguing, and Buck Pierce trying to get back in the equation. And he has Paris Jackson for another first down toss. And Buck Pierce has got a hot hand off the bench. Yeah, and you, and you wonder when, when you hear quarterbacks, backup quarterbacks, always talking about how, yes, they prepare during practice 
there's Paris Jackson in that bunch formation how they prepare and practice like they're going to start because you never know what can happen and sometimes you wonder if it's just lip service from the quarterback the backup but they have to because this happens in a hurry and Buck Pierce has now got the team three touchdown passes 301 yards for Pierce in that start against Edmonton four weeks ago first down looks end zone and overthrows Paris Jackson a little pressure in front of Buck Pierce there caused him to change his throwing motion. The Edmonton Eskimos got a feel. I believe it was Jerome Haywood. Good push up the middle by number 99 for the Edmonton Eskimos. He comes up that middle, and I think it just adjusted the throwing motion here for Buck Pierce a little bit with 99 right in his face. So second and 10 from the 18. Pressure. Scott Gordon safety blitz got it away Simon cuts it back to the five yard line of first down Lions excellent recognition from Buck Pierce to see the blitz as you called it Chris from the safety Scott Gordon coming to the left of your screen as he comes off the edge that's the recognition first of all from Buck Pierce so it's the hot throw now and the quick throw he's got to get it out of his hands because you can't block them all and he's got to rely on G. Roy Simon now to shake his man because it's man-to-man -man defense he gets a little bit of leverage on that out second catch for G. Roy Simon ninth play of the drive look out Pierce Greg Peach takes him down right back at the 15. And there's the difference on how Greg Peach will play Buck Pierce as opposed to Casey Printers. You remember when he was coming off the edge against Printers, how he just would stay here. This time, watch how he attacks Buck Pierce off the edge. A little bit different quarterback, so he comes up the field aggressively and goes right to that outside shoulder for a big, big play for the S enveloping Buck Pierce for his sixth sack of the year. Loss of nine. Second and goal from the 14. Arsenault over the middle. Flag down. And oh, boy, did he get popped by Scott Gordon, the safety. And again, a penalty marker's on the play. Eskimo's defense stiffens. Another procedure call that will be declined by Edmonton, I think, from the BC Lions. Offside, BC number 19. That penalty is declined. Third down. But what a hit by the safety, Scott Gordon, who's going to play down low. He reads this quickly and jumps from his safety spot down into that 15 yard area and watch the hit coming as Arsenal juggles it a couple of times. You know it's a strong hit when that head snaps back. Paul McCallum puts it through his 13th straight. Lions settle for three. Lions, newcomer Skyler Green. Runs through one would be tackle and returns it to the 30. That's where the Eskimos will go on offense when we come back. From North Vancouver, West Vancouver, over to Vancouver. A little Vancouver trivia right there. Or like Cliff Clavin for a second. But anyway. Ricky Ray back after throwing that interception and out of the backfield is a Vancouver area product. There you go. Who may have taken that C bus, <laughs> Calvin McCarty. Yeah, he's taken it many times, I'm sure. Yeah, and more involved. And again, another guy that's been fighting through a hamstring injury. I mentioned Maurice Lloyd on the defensive side of the ball for Edmonton. And Calvin McCarty on the offensive side. And hamstrings are difficult. They sort of linger with you the entire year, even when you feel like you're back. You're not sure. You don't have the confidence to make the same cuts. And Cal McCarty's been battling that injury all season long. 11th game for McCarty. Six touchdowns on the season. And a gain of six, setting up second and four. And the outs to Ephraim Hill. Once again in the lineup for the Eskimos in place of the injured Maurice Mann, who will fall short of 1,000 yards, missing the final two games of the regular season. And... Hill's been a nice replacement. Well, he has. I mean, last week versus Toronto, he had five catches. You know, just shy of 100 yards. He has the speed to be able to take it deep and, and pretty good size. That was just a quick out right in front of Dante Mark. 
The interception Ricky Ray threw. His second in five games. And his 12th of the year. Handing it off to Arky Whitlock. Right side. Into the secondary. And across midfield. Finally taken down by Ryan Phillips. It's going to be an interesting matchup. We've seen Juwan Armour play well. And make a couple of tackles already. And, and Whitlock against Armour. As they go to the point of attack now. And you see the cutback ability of Arky Whitlock right there. As Armour overruns it slightly. Whit Whitlock then has that cutback lane. And Armour is hoping that his teammates on the inside will pursue and fill that middle lane. Didn't get it. 14 for Whitlock, fifth in the league in all-purpose yards, fifth in the league in yards from scrimmage, and there was movement on that Eskimo offensive line. Might have been the gladiator last week, Calvin Armstrong, the right tackle. You mentioned it suits a rarity, all five Procedure, Edmonton number 59. A five-yard penalty remains first down. It was Armstrong. All five offensive linemen starting their 18th game of the regular season. Well, that's almost unheard of in any league when you consider how physical it is in the offensive and defensive lines down in the trenches. And this Edmonton offensive line has given up just 29 sacks, which is second in the CFL. First and 15. And again, Whitlock. He'll get dragged down by Ricky Foley, the top Canadian on the BC Lions. Well, and the one concern the Lions will have defensively against R.Q. Whitlock in the run game for Edmonton is if they're allowed to get their center and Aaron Fiaconi here and get him out on Juwan Armour and block him because if you can get an offensive lineman out and onto your middle linebacker like Fiaconi gets on Armour there, it makes it very easy to run the ball. You get a soft spot each time. Lions last against the run this year. Second and seven. Ray throws the out. There's Fred Stamps, the leading receiver in the league with his first catch. Working against Dante Marsh in a first down Edmonton. 300.